don't let 10% tempt you into a $70 palette. Okay, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Hi friends, I'm Shauna. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a very special video. So today, at the time this video is coming out, we are in the midst of the Sephora VIP sale. This is the time where we're seeing everybody's recommendations, shop with me, their hauls and their try-ons. We get a lot of VIP content. The sale and its content, its advertising can just sneak up on you where you might not have been thinking about shopping or even the sale at all. And then all of a sudden you see this content and now you're like, hmm, maybe I should go take a look. Before you make your purchase, I hope that you will watch this video because today I am talking you out of buying stuff. On Instagram and YouTube, I asked y'all, like, what are the things that you have been on? You've been so tempted to buy that you need to be talked out of. Y'all left a lot of feedback, a lot of comments, and I need to do my very best to talk you out of buying these items today. So that's what we're doing today. And if you want even more don't shop the VIB sale content, I have made several videos in the past, which you can find below. Or if you search like VIB sale on my channel, you'll find them. Hey y'all, Editing Shana here. I just wanted to jump in really quick before we get further into the video. I wanted to give some credit to Sarah Rose because this video was inspired by ones that she has done where she's asking her subscribers about new makeup releases. So go check out her videos and her channel if you like that kind of content. They'll be linked in the description. And I really want to get started because I'm very excited about today's video. The first point I want to make, which actually isn't about individual product, but I have to say it, I have to say it. If you are a VIB or VIB Rouge, you are getting 10 or 15% off. Y'all, this is like 10% off is almost pandering. 10% off is the coupon that you get when you're interested in a new business. 10% off is almost like a slap in the face. It's, it's nothing. If we're going to get excited about a sale, don't let it be for 10% off. So don't let 10% sway you into buying something that you weren't going to buy in the first place. Now let's get into our first product, which is the Xenon palette by Natasha Denona. I actually had two people ask me to talk about this, Joan on Instagram and Makeup Again 561 on YouTube. Natasha Denona palettes are really popular for people to consider during the sales because they're usually pretty expensive. They're $70 USD, around $95 Canadian, but Natasha Denona is leaving Sephora Canada, so we're not getting this palette, so it's like an easy pass for Canadians. You have no choice. If you've been tempted by this palette, I encourage you to go actually like look at this palette in person or look at somebody who who has it in real life. This photo and the photo that you're seeing on the screen makes it look more, I think, saturated than it actually is. Here is the thing about this palette. You are either a gray eyeshadow wearer or you're not. You are going to really need to love gray eyeshadow in order to like or use this palette. It's almost entirely gray and black. And yeah, there's people who are saying, yeah, it's like kind of new and, ex and exciting. Yeah, there aren't a lot of eyeshadow palettes like this on the market right now. But do you even wear gray eyeshadow? Like, look at how you wear your makeup every day. You're not going to get a lot of different eyeshadow looks with this palette. And if you like grays, then you probably already know that. But if like you're looking for something to like spice up your collection and throw something new in there, don't do it. Don't do it with a $70 palette and with something that you're probably not going to use all that much. It's going to be novel for a little bit and then it's just going to be, you know, decluttered down the line. I bet you majority of people who have either bought this palette for a review or were sent it from the company are going to declutter it within a year for this exact reason. You know, it's true that there's not a lot of gray eyeshadow palettes on the market, but just because there is a new one doesn't mean that you need it. Like newness or something being exciting, something being novel is not a good enough reason to buy it if you're not going to use it. Like this ends up, this is going to end up being a complete waste of money. If you are really drawn to this palette and like you want this color story, the ColourPop Smoke Show palette or the Mini Xenon palette are both better options than this 
big thing that you'll probably never use. Also, just in terms of like quality, what I've heard so far is that the shimmers are kind of disappointing. And also, if you own the Natasha Denona Glam Palette, there's actually quite a bit of overlap between those two, like about five of the 15 shades. So you have a third of the palette that's going to be very similar, if not like dupable. And is that really going to be worth it to you? I want to talk about two other palettes together. One is the I Need a Nude palette, and then the other one is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Lights palette. But that one was requested by Lily or Lily on Instagram. These palettes are incredibly similar. Not the same, of course, but just incredibly similar. The reason why I think a lot of us like these two palettes is that they're beautiful to look at. The Natasha Denona packaging is nice on this one. It's really aesthetic. And then when you open them up, if you're a neutral lover, it's just like, it's so aesthetic. It's so aesthetic. I, as I was preparing for this video, I saw both of them, like, you know, about half an hour ago. And I was like, oh, these are so nice. Yes, they are very pretty. But something being nice to look at doesn't mean it's going to function in the way that you want it to. First of all, both of these palettes are very light. I saw somebody swatching out the I Need a Nude palette against the Huda Beauty, the new like grunge palette. And it really reinforced just how much this palette lacks depth. And the same thing can be applied with the Ethereal Lights palette. So this is going to limit you know, how deep you can make your looks. And specifically for the I Need a Nude palette, I think it looks more interesting in the pan than when you swatch it out. When you swatch it out, you can really see that those brown tones in there and it looks like an average palette from almost any makeup brand, you know, once it's swatched out. And there are actually a lot of really, really similar palettes out there. Jen Phelps actually um, compared it to like eight or nine other palettes, including the Tartlet in Bloom, a handful of ColourPop palettes. And it's just, it's not unique in any way. And it's okay for a palette to not be unique. Neither of these palettes are really unique. The reason why this matters is that you probably haven't just developed this preference for these color tones now or yesterday. You've probably had this preference for a while, so you probably own something that's similar. You're just interested in this because it's from a favorite brand or it's just new to the market. When you get it home and when you use it for a year, it's just going to blend in with the other palettes that you already have because it's so similar. There are so many similar palettes and colors out there. It's just not going to do the job that you want it to do once you get it home in your collection if you own other neutral palettes. So you would probably end up just duping out stuff you already have in your own collection. Specifically for the Makeup by Mario palette though, I wanted this last year myself and I came this close to buying it and I'm ultimately glad that I didn't because of like what people say about it. The mattes are sheer and so are the shimmers. It just is so natural. It doesn't really do what you want it to. The last palette I'm going to talk about is the Huda Beauty Grunge palette. Anna on Instagram requested this one and this one's not out yet. It comes out November 1st, so you can't really go and swatch it or play with it in store. And there's also only like limited reviews on this one because again, it's so new, but I have watched a couple reviews on it. And to me, like, it's just another kind of nude palette. It's like, yes, do you like this specific pairing of colors? Sure. But ultimately I find it really hard to be innovated innovative with nude palettes. There are only so many colors out there that just like exist. And it's just kind of like, does this particular pairing of color interest you at this time and space in your life? One thing I haven't talked about with any of the other palettes is that 15 colors is a lot in a palette. Chances are there's going to be colors that you don't like or don't use. So when you're talking about 15 pans, how many of those do you think you will actually use and like? 
go in there, count them up, see what you think is going to apply. Because if it's something like, oh yeah, four or five of the colors I don't really like, that's like a third of the palette. I'm personally not a fan of Huda's formula because her past handful of palettes have these like special shimmer shades in them and they look cool in photographs and when you first open up the palette, but then when you actually go in and use them, they're basically just shimmers and all of those cool effects go away almost upon first use. Huda's brand is the only one I can think of that consistently puts out colors that look different in the pan than like when you swatch them out. Yeah, it, it's one thing, you know, to be mesmerized by something in the pan, but it's it's another thing for a color to look different than what it looks like in the pan. And I've just noticed so many of her colors will look cool tone in the pan and then warm tone when you swatch them. And when you compare them, you're like, what the hell happened? So you don't actually know what you're getting with, with Huda. How is the color going to swatch on you and how is it going to look on the eyes? It's just, it's a little bit frustrating to me because so many other brands are capable of making their shadows true to life, but Huda somehow can't. There are a couple of similar colors within the palette. There are actually quite a few darker shades in here. I'm looking at swatches right now. Um, one, two, three, four, five, like five, like f fairly dark shades. That will either be a bonus or a plus to you, depending on your preferences and your skin tone. But there's also just kind of like overlapping shades. Like two of the shimmers look identical. You won't be able to tell them apart on the eyes and a couple of the mattes just look so similar in these swatches these two browns look so similar they're not going to look different on the eye then you have like a matte sparkly black do you wear a matte sparkly black i don't know when i look at this stuff swatched out it's just unremarkable to me Maybe I'm just jaded. I don't know. But like, you're really going to wear these colors every day. You don't have other things in your collection that aren't similar. Even if you have a palette that isn't identical, you can still get like vibes and feels from other palettes. And I think when it comes to all of these palettes, the question is also how many palettes do you already have? How many palettes do you have that are similar? And if you already have a number of palettes that feels overwhelming or that feels a lot or like you're not even wearing all of your palettes regularly you could just be throwing something else in the shovel that will ultimately get lost and you won't use i think this happens the most with holiday palettes or holiday releases because i think we're more inclined to buy these things out of excitement or out of like oh my god holiday releases and you get caught up in the fervor next up we're going to talk about the sparkling clean kit somebody on youtube asked about this specifically and I'm kind of glad that they did because these Sephora kits are really popular every year. This one is $42 USD so it's you know under the $50 price point which makes it more on the affordable side. First of all do you need a makeup bag because this comes with a makeup bag and people are like oh my god it comes with a makeup bag. But like do you need one? Do you really need a makeup bag? Number two the two full-size products in here the merit lipstick and the say blush are both like bold colors so you're gonna have a preference or a feeling about these bold colors i know you will because we all have a preference for like what kind of bold lipsticks we wear are they gonna be more brown are they gonna be red are they gonna be purple or maybe you don't wear bold lipsticks kind of same thing with the blush like, are you a person who likes the berry blush? And out of all of the things in here, these two full sizes matter the most because these are going to be the things that take the longest to finish. And with that said, are you buying this or are you interested in this because you actually want to use up all of these products? Or are you just excited that there's like some kind of new kit that you could buy and you could try a lot of things at once? Because being interested in trying a lot of things at once isn't actually an indicator that you're going to use these products or that. And that like you're thinking about these products themselves and like applying them to your life. 
And also like, I mean, how you use makeup and the types of preferences that you have. When it comes to these kids, I think people are really, or they're more willing to settle and like not have all the things align with the preferences perfectly because you get to try so much. And one of the things that just I disagree with is people will say like, if you wanted to buy one or two of these things full price and it's equal to the kit, let's say you want to buy like one mascara mini and one lipstick and that's money matters for sure. But then you're also bringing in like six or seven things and that's just like wasteful to not care or think about the makeup that you're bringing in. In my opinion, you should like everything in the kit or have a place or a person for it to go to. It's one thing. And with that said, people, when they talk about these kits, they'll be like, oh, you can break them up and you can give this to this person, this to this person. Fine if you have somebody that you could actually hand the product to. But I also think it's kind of different to like gift somebody something from a kit because stuff in the kit won't come in its actual packaging that it would if you were to just buy that thing individually and I think it would be nice to like if you wanted to actually gift somebody a lipstick to like buy them a lipstick that comes in the box and that they're like capable of returning if they don't like it but like if you're if you're thinking oh I want to buy this kit and then I can I can break it up and give it to people it's kind of like you're thinking about yourself instead of thinking about the recipients on the end of the gift and like, would they actually like it? Would they use it? And like that kind of thing. So to conclude, do you like everything in here? And do you think that you could use and wear all of this stuff? Truly. All right. Gabriella wants me to talk her out of the Tower 28 concealer and mascara. Um, I know Gabriella. And I know all of the makeup that she wears, her preferences, it's, I'm not going to come for her for that. I can do that privately. But I think I'm like kind of glad that she mentioned something like this because Tower 28, they're a great brand and these are relatively new products or the concealer is anyways. And I can see folks wanting to buy it and try it during the sale. So I guess the question is really for like anybody out there. Do you want this simply because it's new? Is this like a trying to try thing? Like, are we just excited that Natasha Nona has a new palette and we want to try it? Are we excited that Tower 28 has a new concealer and we just want to try it? Or do we actually think we're going to like and use this product? Like, do we think that we can use this to completion? Um, I would take a look at the reviews of this concealer and there's actually a weird amount of incentivized reviews. Um, so once you remove those, there's more negative reviews, which I guess would make sense. And a lot of people are saying it creases like crazy and it does so quickly. And for people who have, you know, dry under eyes that it dries them out and or looks dry. Concealer is such a workhorse product for most people. And it's also something that we have very strong feelings on and it's way harder to make a beautiful concealer than it is to make a nice eyeshadow product. I would suggest when it comes to a product like this, go in store and like swatch it out, see how it feels and if you actually think that you could like this formula. Um, also, how many concealers do you have already? Is this like the time and the place for one or are we just caught up in something new and exciting? Are we just like looking for ways to spend our money? As for the mascara, um, mascara again is very personal and it's hard for me to say anything about a mascara because, you know, I could say it's really natural. That could be exactly what you're looking for. So I can't really talk about the formula in that sense. I have two questions. Number one, how many mascaras do you have right now? Do you need one? And number two, if you are interested in trying this, just go for the mini. Just try the mini first, see if you're a fan, feel it out, and then maybe later, if you like it, buy the full size. Now onto a couple of blushes. 
Chloe is interested in the rose ink blushes and Maya is interested in the say blushes. Um, Maya said that she is interested in like a wine slash like deep berry color. Chloe is just like interested in trying the formula, generally speaking. With both of these blushes, I think they're aesthetic. I think that the rose ink blushes, they're just beautiful to look at. So I think aesthetics plays huge roles in both of these, but also like the branding of Say is just so good that I think that interests a lot more people in the brand than we would care to admit. Now, I don't know if that's true for Chloe or Maya. I can't speak for them, but I just like have a feeling that it plays a role. Now, Maya said she wants like a wine berry color. And I went to go look at the Say Blush in Dreamy and I had to give myself a moment because it's just so beautiful. Like it, it really is a beautiful color. I don't know if that's the one she specifically is talking about, but it's like, I think one of the two options that would qualify as like a berry in my mind. And if you're interested in trying like a deeper color to you, I feel like it's kind of a risk because here are my constellation of questions. One, have you tried a blush in this color before? What is your track record with deeper blushes or with berry blushes in specific? Have you liked them? Have you used them? Number three, do you want to just try something new or is this like something that's kind of been on your radar for a long time? When the seasons change, I think we can get really like drawn in to very seasonal makeup, specifically with the, you know, turn of the seasons getting colder. This like cold girl makeup is like, it becomes more in or the in from the cold makeup. That's a trend that has been around every, you know, fall, winter for years. If you've never tried a liquid product, it, I don't know, it might be a gamble. And I think one of the things you could try before you buy is looking at your eyeshadows and trying that color on your cheeks. Yes, it might not look the exact same or it might not be the exact same color, but if you have something that is in the berry family, even if it's like somewhat close, doesn't have to be exact, it can give you this vibe that, you know, can help you imagine what it would look like on you. And with blushes, I do wonder like, how many do you have? Is, are you going to wear this? Are you just bored with your makeup collection right now? Or are you going to wear this? Blush is another thing that people can get so sucked into. And we can just like want to throw in a new blush because we're bored. Or like something is exciting because it's in a new formula. And then we buy something and it gives us the satisfaction of trying something new. From experience, I have Boulderberry blushes. And I don't wear them all that much, but I like only need one. They take forever to finish. Blush as a whole just takes a really long time. And I do think that a liquid blush is going to take a long time as well. If this took three years to use up, would you spend the time to do it? Doesn't matter if it only took would take like six months, but in a hypothetical universe, if it took three years to finish up, would you take the time to finish this thing to completion? I think that's like an important question to ask that like will help suss out your motivations and your interests. And like, if you're just bored or wanting something new or novel. Now with the rose ink blushes, these blushes I have heard have no dry down, talking about how they're basically just bombs and they have no dry down. They've been described as greasy and also that they pick up makeup underneath. None of this sounds appealing to me. And I don't know if that's appealing to you either, Chloe. So after um, Chloe left her comment, somebody responded, and I have to read it out. Uh, Bailey Dunton writes, the only one of these I have is the rose ink blush, and I literally never use it because it's super greasy and not very pigmented. So it looks like I just wiped some Vaseline on my cheeks. There you have it, folks. If you can't go in and swatch it, or you've never swatched it, then like maybe it's a pass until you do. Okay, we're going to move on. And Byless Jess is interested in the YSL Holiday Balm Set and the Hourglass Holiday Palette. Don't do it. Don't buy the Hourglass Holiday Palette. Um, I finished mine 
kind of. There was just the blushes left and I hated them. I think I still have that somewhere around here. Might be my like declutter bin. They're, they're around. And there was no item that I tried that was good. Like it was all just average. Like nothing was special. You're paying luxury prices for hourglass for products that are just okay. Like their bronzer was fine, but it's just a bronzer. There's nothing special about it. This palette is $122 Canadian plus tax. It's so expensive for mediocrity and it takes forever to finish this thing, like two years. Yes, you could finish some of the products in a couple of months, but other things like the blushes are going to take you a long time to finish. Are you prepared to put in two years worth of effort to finish this palette? Don't let people convince you to buy this palette so you can like try all of their products or like a good sampling of their products. Don't do it. It's expensive mediocrity. All right, next up, um, Beauty Mentat wants the rare mini set. And there's two basic questions that we have to ask here first. Number one, do you have a track record of using and liking liquid blush and liquid highlighter? Number two, do you like warm tone blush and warm tone highlighter? If neither of these things are true, like if you don't like liquids, you don't like warm tones, then this set just like forget about it. Four products, like two blushes and two highlights, it's like kind of a lot to bring in at once, in my opinion. Also, these things are going to take a million years to finish up. The blushes are so pigmented, you don't need a lot. This thing is going to take you like a year to finish up per blush. Are you prepared to put in that effort? I feel like when it comes to kits, we're just like, we're, we're not thinking about using stuff up. We just get interested in trying something new. Like there's a novel arrangement. We can try a lot of things at once. So if that happens to be your mindset, let's consider, am I willing to put in the effort to, to finish these things up? I have tried these blushes and I do not like them. Yes, they are very pigmented. So it's very easy to overuse these and also, they're not great at blending out. Something like the Glossy Cloud Paint is also very pigmented, but it blends out so beautifully. So like over applying isn't that big of an issue. These blushes though, they blend horribly in my opinion. So you apply too much and then you're like kind of stuck with it. But then also like you get like little patches on your cheeks and it looks not good. Like it's not cute. I tried to make it work several times and I eventually decluttered it. Lastly, with these things, what's your blush and highlight collection looking like already? Highlight takes even longer than blush to finish up. How much do you already have already? Like, are, are these blushes really filling a hole? Are these just going to be used five times and then never used again and never decluttered? Blush is one of those things that makeup wearers tend to hoard. And also a lot of people hold the view of just like, or an expectation that they're not going to finish their blushes. Um, I, I think makeup should be used and that we should buy things that we think we're going to use. So if you already have a mountain of blush, two new ones are just going to get lost in the shuffle or they'll be novel for a few days. And then that's kind of it. Last but not least, Elizabeth on Instagram wants to be talked out of the Fenty lip gloss set. This year's set has all three of their formulas, their shimmery one, their cream one, and then their heat one. Do you like all of these formulas? Like are, and also, even if you've never tried them, generally speaking, do you like a shimmer gloss or do you like an opaque gloss? I think most people have a preference or they like one more than the other. Do you like both of those together? And then I just feel like the deciding factor is the heat. Do you like a lip plumping gloss? Is that something that you wear? Lip plumping glosses are not popular in the market. I think for a reason, because they're uncomfortable. They burn a lot of people's lips, they hurt. And I think it's just gonna be a product where you're gonna try it once to like 
see the effect and you're probably not going to use it. But also that one is a sheer gloss, like a completely clear gloss. And people also tend to have strong preferences about whether or not they're into the clear gloss. So buying these formulas, all three, it's like, yes, it's nice to try, but if you like all three colors and all three formula types, it's kind of expensive. It's like $55 for these. I have a hard time justifying $55 for a lip gloss. I get that these are full size, but are you really going to use a full size of a lip plumping gloss? Like, are you really? And if you don't like that, like, what are you going to do with it? Are you just prepared to throw it away? That feels wasteful to me. I have a feeling that if whoever buys this set, it's going to be the heat gloss that gets to the side and it gets decluttered and not used. And I personally don't feel great about buying something knowing it's never going to get used. How do you feel about that? How do you, how does that sit with you? And what's your lip gloss situation like already? Lip gloss is a product that will expire and like you don't have all the time in the world to use it. So could you use this up in a reasonable manner? That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I had a lot of fun trying to talk you out of makeup products. Um, you don't need anything if you don't have the budget for it, period. So we don't even need to open up the Sephora sale tab if like we are on a budget or on a no buy. Don't do it. Don't don't let 10% tempt you into a $70 palette. Okay, don't do it. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. If you like this video, let me know in the comments because I would love to do more in the future, especially with Black Friday coming around. I really want to do one about like stuff you're interested in for Black Friday. Doesn't necessarily have to be makeup, but I want to talk to you about Black Friday purchases and I'm prepared to be ruthless. So uh, let a girl know in the comments. Thanks for watching and hanging out and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.